Hi guys, Steeler Boy here. Welcome to this video, this updated video basically, on the new version or the latest version of SPAD Next. Um, SPAD of course stands for SciTech Panel Advanced Drivers and it really is a necessity, it's an essential if you guys have any SciTech hardware, which you can see in the bottom right of the screen at the moment. I know a number of you guys have been waiting for this video for a long, long time. I do apologize for the delay. Um, as I put in my posts on the comments, um, yeah, it's basically real life and my streaming life, my Twitch streaming life, I kind of got in the way and delayed things a little bit. But it's here at last. I'm doing the video now. I've got to admit, um, some of you guys actually um, loaded or tried out this new version way before I did. Um, I was stuck with the older version for quite some time. Um, and then in response to your comments, I basically thought, right, I better go and download the latest version and try it out for myself. And I have to admit, it is vastly different to the earlier versions. So, what's different about it? Well, you guys will probably already know if you've got it, you're just having a few issues configuring it. And boy, do I understand that, because it took me probably two evenings trying to figure the damn thing out and trying to get all the settings uh, and everything as they should be. It is quite... I wouldn't say complicated, but it's very involved. There's a lot, a lot of settings. But, at the end of the day, it is much, much better, far superior to the earlier version. Even um, these lights on the SciTech panel, I know wouldn't not, they would not light for me, and I know they would not light for you guys either in the earlier version. Now they do. They're not lit at the moment because I haven't set things up, not got it switched on at the moment. But if you're new to SPAD, and if you're wondering what the heck am I on about, it is basically, let me just bring my browser down and get SPAD out of the way for a second. So this is the address. If you go to www.fsgs.com forward slash wiki forward slash current release, you can of course just do a Google search for SPAD next download or something and it'll take you to the page as well. But you want to go to the current release page. Now this is the current release, 0.9.4. And then at the bottom you have a SPAD Next installer. As simple as that. Click that, um, download it, get it all installed, and that's it. Now this is the, the um, that's for the unregistered version, the free version, which will operate with FSUIPC. Um, that's done by uh, Pete Dawson. Uh, or Dowson I think his name is and I personally because I'm a flight simmer and have been for many years I do have the fully registered version of FSUIPC and that works 100% with SPAD Next however you can also get the registered version of SPAD by going um, to I think it's on yeah SIM market you can go to SIM market and register this for Currently, the current price is twenty four ninety nine plus VAT. That's in euros. Twenty four ninety nine plus VAT. And that will give you access. I did. I think I showed this screen on my previous video, but basically, it will give you access to all of these things. The features in green are already available on the registered version, and the features in black are coming up. So, as you can see, there's quite a lot of extra features available with the fully registered version now. Before I started making this video today, I've actually got a trial key. Once you, insult, once you install SPAD, you can go to the registration uh, settings and request a trial key, which will last you for five days. That's what I've got running at the moment, because I wanted to try out SIM Connect. Because I've got FSUIPC, all of my settings, all of my configuration has been done with FSUIPC in mind but I wanted to check to make sure that it also worked with SIM Connect to show you guys, which I'll demonstrate in a short while. But it will also work then fully with your yoke, with your quadrant, the trim wheel, etc. You can see it all there. So that's the registered version. Right, so that's what it is. It basically is a interface program, um, a driver's stroke interface program that allows you to set up your SciTech panels relatively pain-free compared to what it is without SPAD Next. You just cannot operate the SciTech panels effectively without this program, in my opinion. You just cannot. It's essential. So, this is the um, the first screen you go to. We'll take a quick look at settings, because a lot of this I'm going to be kind of just going through how it works for me, how I've got it set up personally. 
So you've got uh, your various joystick, you've got the various panels there, the BIP, the back, uh, backlit information panel, the yoke, multi-panel, pro yoke, uh, the quadrant. These are all things that, as you can see, they're switched on at the moment. That's because I have the five-day trial for the fully registered version. Um, so that's to basically set it up. No matter what panel you have, you can switch it on or off in this setting, in this um, configuration screen. Registration, that's where you request your trial key from. Um, and then if you like it after five days, you can obviously go and purchase it. That's my hardware ID. That's not um, a registration uh, key, so don't try and copy it. That's just my hardware ID. <laughs> um, application, this is where you get your settings and you can control what it does and when it does it. So automatic updates, minimize the system tray when starting, exit when connection to SIM is lost, I've got that set to on, disable automatic profile switch, taskbar notifications, FSU IPC connection I've got switched on, um, SIM connect, now when you have the free version, the unregistered version, that will need to be ticked off, you need to turn that off. You can only turn it on when you have either the trial version installed or the fully registered version, otherwise that's got to be off. You cannot use SIM connect with the free version. Okay. Um, similarly for M uh, PMDG, I, I have got a PMDG but uh, I haven't actually got it installed. <laughs> so I have, I've got that switched off at the moment but you, not, you need to switch that on if you've got your PMDG aircraft. Um, you can also disable a splash screen if you want. So let's go ahead and look at the various screens. So I've got a few profiles already set up here. Um, I've got the default 737-800, um, there's a freeware ATR that I've got. Um, at the moment though for setting things up like I did in the first video, I'm going to be setting things up for the bog standard default Cessna 172. <coughs> I've also got a profile for the um, A2A simulations Comanche, <coughs> Excuse me, um, but I haven't yet fully set that up. I'm still playing around with that one. Similarly I've got the Flight 1 version of the ATR-72. Um, I'm still playing around with that one as well. <laughs> so this is a program that you're probably going to be spending a lot of time trying to tweak and get right, but once you've got it, it's uh, it's absolutely great. So we've got the Cessna 172. I'm just going to... Uh, by the way, when you first get this, obviously there won't be any profiles. You have to set the profile up. Um, create an empty profile, for example. Um, and then you just work through that profile. You click Activate Profile. Um, yeah, that's okay. I think I may have changed it at some point, but <laughs> right panels. So I have got, as you can see from the screen, I've got two panels. I've got the multi-panel and the pro switch panel. So by default, everything's dark, everything's powered off. You need to have this button here, virtual power, that needs to be switched on. Now you can see that my panel has now sprung to life. I've got um, values there reading and currently they do match what you can see in the sim. This is not a screenshot by the way behind. <laughs> I have actually got FSX powered up um, with the aircraft, with the, with the engine running so I don't waste the battery. Um, and because I've actually got the panel configured it is actually mirroring what we've got on the display here. Altitude 7000 and you can see there altitude 7000. Um, if I go on to uh, vertical speed and change the vertical speed uh, whoops, I can't see because my hand's in the way. <laughs> if I change the vertical speed to say 500 and then it matches on the vertical speed there. So how do we set this up? Well, let's go to, you click on whichever part you want to set up. Okay, so we've got the uh, ALT selected on the selector here and it also shows on here. So what we want to do basically is we want to think what do we want to happen when we turn the um, rotation knob here the, the, to change the setting. What do we actually want to do? Well the first thing we want to do is we want to display the value, the autopilot altitude value. That's what we want to display. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to delete that event and show you how to add it. So if I click delete event. So to begin with when you guys set this up this will be completely empty, there will be nothing on here. In fact, you know what? Let's just let's delete all the events just to show you. There we go. That's what you'll see. No events are currently programmed. So what we do is we go to add event. 
and we want first of all a display value so this is what you'll see as you can see there's quite a lot of, of options now because I operate FSUI PC mainly I'm going to click that to start with I'm going to highlight FSUI PC what that will do is it will filter all of these options to purely FSUI PC we can then scroll down and what we want is the uh, autopilot altitude value which is that one FSUI PC autopilot altitude value click on that and then OK and OK again so that's what we do it will first of all display it what we then need to do is to figure out what happens when we turn the knob counterclockwise oops sorry wrong one click OK for that one then we need to go add event again what happens when we turn it clockwise well when we turn it clockwise we want the value to go up we we'll click on that go to add action and this is what we uh, come with now we're dis uh, presented with a number of options for most um, options of these for most of the time you'll want to choose send simulation event okay and as before I click FSUI PC and what we want is the altitude to go up so autopilot altitude variable increase that's the one we need AP alt var increase so select that click OK click OK and again now we've got two events in there we're displaying the value we know what happens when we turn the knob clockwise the value should go up in fact let's just try that if we turn it clockwise it goes up if we turn it counterclockwise the other way nothing will happen at the moment because we've not programmed that in so let's go ahead and do that now add event counterclockwise we need to add action send simulation event FSUI PC and then we need to turn it down uh, where has it gone there we are autopilot altitude variable decrement that one decrement or decrease whichever whichever one it might stand for um, AP alt var deck select that one click OK 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 there we go we've got three values now in there or three actions so we're displaying the value turning it count um, clockwise turns the value up and now when you see we do it counterclockwise the value goes down so now that is the altitude basically set all good however let's do sim connect because um, if you don't have the fully registered of FS, uh, version of FSUI PC but you do want to go ahead and have the fully registered version of SPAD let's see if this works as well shall we so we'll delete the events and let's try this with sim connect instead remember again this is only if you have either the trial key or a fully registered version of SPAD of SPAD if you don't have that you must use FSUI PC you cannot use sim connect right let's add event display value let's click on sim connect this time and we want like before we want the, alti the AP um, altitude where is it gone autopilot altitude lock variable now I've got to be honest with you this is the first time I'm actually trying sim connect um, because as I've explained already I use FSUI PC and I'm assuming that it's gonna be it needs to be the variable it's, it's gonna be that one maybe or autopilot altitude lock or it might be that the variable let's try that one <laughs> let's see if that's correct okay and then we'll go ahead and add an event again turning it clockwise add action simulator event or simulation event sim connect and alt alt can't say it now <laughs> autopilot altitude var inc that's the same as before 
with FSU IPC if you remember it's almost the same name AP Alt Var Inc. That's turning it clockwise. We'll now go ahead and add the uh, counterclockwise one in. Add action, send simulation event, except we want DEC. AP Alt Var Deck. Put that in. Let's see if it all works. So let's turn clockwise. Yep, everything is going up. And counterclockwise, everything is going down. So that's how you set it up with SIM Connect as well. <clears throat> so that does work. So it's it's basically the same operation. It's an identical operation. You're just choosing the SIM Connect version instead of FSU IPC. For my part, I'm going to turn it back to FSU IPC because I use that um, so very very quickly, and it gives you guys a chance to see this one more time. Um, AP altitude value click OK 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 add event clockwise add action send simulation event FSU IPC uh, alt AP where's it gone again AP alt var inc and counterclockwise add action send simulation event uh, FSU IPC you, you, you'll notice that if you don't filter you get both versions available so you just got to be careful to chip, uh, choose the right one FSU IPC AP alt var deck that's the one cool so I'm set up again now for FSU IPC and everything works as it should Cool, so that is how you set up um, one of these. We'll go through heading. What I'm gonna do, I'm not gonna show you how to set up each one. I'm gonna go through and show you how I've got it set up personally um, for my setup. So if we go to vertical speed indicator, VS, and click on that. Display value, I have set to display AP VS value, and clockwise, it's AP VS VAR Inc. Counterclockwise, AP VS VAR Deck. Yeah, it's going to be the same for each of these really. Indicated airspeed, uh, clockwise turn, AP SPD VAR Inc. So autopilot speed VAR Inc. Counterclockwise, autopilot speed VAR Deck. And display value, autopilot airspeed value and for heading <laughs> you can guess what it's going to be can't you clockwise turn uh, is heading bug ink counterclockwise heading bug deck and display value autopilot heading value okay and for course I think I've got the course set up or have I yes I have so the display value is nav1 OBS CRS. The clockwise turn nav1 OBS CRS by 1 and the counterclockwise turn nav1 OBS CRS by 1. So in other words it's changing it up and down as you do that. That's how to set up basically all the things on the left hand side and the various um, dials, the various values what about these buttons? Now the buttons are interesting because um, you'll notice, in fact let me just move SPAD out of the way and I'll show you what happens with the autopilot. You're probably going to notice anyway but watch what happens. So if we switch on heading the autopilot light comes on. Okay. If we um, disable autopilot they both go off. So heading, not only does the heading light come on, so does the autopilot. If we go to NAV, the autopilot light stays on, the heading light goes off. Yeah. Approach, again, the nav light goes off, autopilot stays on. Um, for the back course setting, the reverse, the approach stays on as well. 
<laughs> so can you begin to see the kind of little um, idiosyncrasies, the, the kind of little things that we have to sort out regarding the lights? Um, you'll notice then when I took off approach mode, it also took off REV. Um, altitude, similarly, if, if AP was off, clicking ALT would actually click on AP, the autopilot light. So, what we've got to do is we've got to mirror what happens with the simulation autopilot in SPAD. So how do we do that? Right, okay. Let me go to the heading one first of all. <coughs> so, for activating, I've got three separate um, actions available. In fact, I'm getting some kind of graphics uh, distortion. One second a minute. I'm getting some graphics corruption. One moment. Let me see if I can fix that. That might be a bit better. So, when we activate the button, when we click it, I've got three separate actions. When we deactivate it, when we want to turn it off, I've got one action. So let's take a look at the three actions. We want to send the command, the simulation event, to set heading hold. So we're sending AP heading hold uh, to the simulator. So if I go to edit event, um, what happens is, when you click a button, you can set any number of actions, as you can see. The first one I put in is, okay, when we press the heading button, we want to set heading hold. So let me just show you how that is. If I go to edit, oops, edit, and this one. There we go. That's the one I've selected. It's FSUIPC again. As you can see, the one above it is SIM Connect Autopilot Heading Hold. So if you have SIM Connect and the fully registered version of SPAD, you can select that one if you want. I've gone for FSUIPC. Autopilot heading hold. That's the first action we need. That's what we want to happen when we click the button. Then we want to set up the lights, the LED of the button itself. So we want to send the control and change the light. How do we do that? Right, go to edit. This is what you'll see. Um, in fact, let me just go to add action. That would be a bit simpler. When you go to add action, as you already know, you've got sem send simulation event. But right at the top here, we've got button light mode. Yeah, we click that. This is what we get. So we're on the multi panel. We want to choose whichever button we want to light up. In this case, it's the heading button, which is already ticked. And this is the option. What do we want the light to do? Do we want to turn it off? Do we want to turn it on? Well, what we want to do is when we when we click it once, we need the light to go on. In which case, it would be that one, short mode on. Yeah? So that's the one it's set to. When we press the button, we want to change the light to on, short mode. Um, I did actually choose as well um, the short press, basically, not a long press. Similarly, when we turn the heading off, we also want to change the nav one to off as well. Let me just change let me demonstrate that again if I can on here. So let's say that nav was on. So you're following um, maybe an uh, a pre-programmed flight plan on nav mode. You then want to go to heading hold. Maybe you're on vectors from ATC and you want to go over to heading hold. Watch what happens when I click the heading button in the simulator. Yeah, Obviously the nav light goes off and the heading light comes on. So, going back to SPAD, we want that to happen as well. So basically what we've got now is when we activate the heading button if nav light was on, we want to turn it off. So that's what that action is there. If we go to edit event, uh, so we've got change the light of the multi panel nav light to off. Yeah. So nav may not have been on to begin with, but if it was, we need to turn it off. 
And then the final one is when we deactivate the button, when we uh, want heading to turn off, we need to obviously send the, the instruction to the simulator that we want to turn off heading hold. So again, that's a simple matter of the, uh, the simulation control. If I go to edit, uh, control event, AP heading hold off. Yeah, I can demonstrate that again very quickly. Add event. Um, whoops. Add event. Uh, deactivate short. Add action. Send simulation event. And we want the FSU IPC autopilot heading. Where is it gone? There we are. Autopilot heading hold off. That's what we would want when we deactivate it okay so I hope that's clear on that one then we've got the navigation button very very similar indeed when we want to activate uh, nav hold we want to send a simulation event to turn nav1 on which is autopilot nav1 hold on we also want to turn the light on so we change the light of the multi-panel autopilot short mode to on and we change the heading button to off yeah so flicking between heading and navigation basically their respective lights go on or off depending which one's selected if heading is selected your nav light goes off if nav is selected your heading light goes off so basically just uh, select that in the appropriate options there uh, again my graphics is kind of giving me a ghost drop down there one second not quite sure what's going on, there we are and uh, finally when we want to switch it off we send the simulation event to turn nav1 hold off indicated airspeed um, ah, well, this is interesting because the Cessna doesn't really have a um, an airspeed hold <laughs> then I haven't actually got it set up for this profile but it would be exactly the same thing um, altitude ALT we want to send a simulation event to turn AP alt hold that goes on we want to change the light of the multi-panel autopilot to on and we, when, when we turn it off we want to send a simulation event to turn alt hold off okay let me just demonstrate that again in here so ALT and then turn it off okay right a quick look at the autopilot one a again vertical speed by the way does exactly the same thing follows exactly the same pattern um, and approach right approach is approach and REV are a little bit more involved because they um, if you remember from the demonstration in the sim they kind of work together or whatever so this is the settings that I have when we click it on um, this is approach mode APR we send a simulation event to turn AP APR hold on we also want to change the light to on when we deactivate it we want the approach hold to go off that's AP APR hold off we also want to um, change the REV off as well. If REV, the back course, was on, we need to turn that off. That's the simulation event. And we also want to change the light of the REV to off as well. Let me just go back up to the, uh, the simulation. So if REV was on, and if we deactivate APR, then we need to also turn off the back course light, the REV light. Okay, I hope that explains that. We'll look at the autopilot, um, the master autopilot switch, because this is interesting. Because we need to do quite a number of things when the autopilot is clicked. So when we press it on, when we activate autopilot, we obviously need to send the simulation event on, autopilot on. By the way, this is all deactivation. It looks a bit confusing. There's only one action for activating. Yeah, which is to send the um, the control event autopilot on um, for deactivating there we go you can see it if I click it that's a bit better 
for deactivating all of these things happen so activating just one event deactivating we need to turn the autopilot off we need to change the light of all of the buttons to off because they don't do it automatically you need to actually set it in here so when you deactivate autopilot all of the other lights need to be turned off so that it's simply a change light option on each of these buttons we turn them all off so let me just demonstrate that very quickly add event when we deactivate it short we need to add an action button light mode and let's say for example um, indicated airspeed needs to be off um, that that's all you do really it's as simple as that you just set the light to be off so in other words let me just demonstrate again on here we've got oh heading on um, an ALT on let's say if we press the autopilot button if we depress it de deactivate it all the lights go off so on the panel I'm gonna click on heading and you'll now see in the simulation the autopilot and heading come on let's also put on altitude so we've now got both of them I'm now gonna and you'll see that the autopilot light comes on obviously here if I now press the autopilot button everything goes off as it should do so it's mirroring exactly what the simulation does okay um, what else can I show you I mean similarly before heading and nav you can see that they are basically um, opposing each other when heading is on nav is off and when nav is on heading is off the autopilot light stays on until we actually maybe deactivate nav the autopilot light stays on then we click it all so that's that set up um, not sure what what else there is to basically go through it it is quite a complicated thing you do need to take your time with it certainly um, I guess we can also quickly run through like flaps this is really the same thing as before the only thing that's changed between the new version and the old version is there are a lot more options when you actually assign an action and of course all the lights work properly which is brill um, but yeah the the actual way you click on all these things is exactly the same so for example flaps up I've got uh, activate short so let's go to add event and you get two options activate short or activate long I always choose the short one all of my settings for are for short actions so we go to activate short you would click add action send simulation event and then you would find whatever um, thing you're looking for in this case it would be the flaps so I've got mine set to send control event flaps decrement okay um, and similarly for flaps down you just click in the lower section there exactly the same thing activate short send simulation event and it's flaps increment um, auto throttle is well I have actually got it uh, configured for the Cessna I didn't think I had but basically switched on so you've either got switched on or switched off switched on we need to send auto throttle arm switched off we need to send auto throttle uh, well it's toggles basically it toggles so it's, it's just a straightforward toggle switch pitch nose down let's have a look you've got add event nose up nose down so for nose down we want to send a simulation event elevator trim down for nose up send simulation event I know it says control event there but you'll notice that if I go to add event and nose up and then add action it's send simulation event <laughs> so watch out for that it says send control event on the uh, the main window but when you add an action it send simulation event so that's why I always refer that's why I'm always talking about send simulation event elevator trim up that is basically that panel set up the switch panel is very very similar um, kind of <laughs> it's uh, this is your rotational one here where it can, where it controls your magnetos from off right left both and start um, when it's in the off position uh, 
as again this will all be completely empty when you come to it add event this is what you now hang on I'm going to move the window because you can't see that because the camera's in the way there we go so add event this is all the actions you have so you can work your way through you can set this up I, personally I've got it set up as you can see there to off um, what happens when we go into the left position the right position both etc so when you're in the off position you wanted to say what happens when you turn it from the off position what happens when you turn the selector from the off position well what we want to do is we want to activate the right magneto so we go to add action send simulation event and again I'm going to choose FSUI PC we want to choose magneto magneto right that's the one it would be if I click OK and then OK OK again uh, you'll now notice that I've got an additional um, thing underneath that's the action I've just had it's basically a duplicate of this top one I just went through it to show you how it works so I'm going to delete that event I've just added um, then I've got um, off position set so that happened when I turn the selector into the off position so in other words it's what happens when it goes from right magneto to off yeah what happens when we turn it into the off position well we obviously want magnetos off what happens when we turn it to L well we want magneto left <laughs> quite obviously what happens when we turn it into the both all position which is that one well we want magneto both when we turn it to the start position we want magneto start which is just happening by the looks of it on my aircraft um, and then when we go to uh, that says both all hang on a second let me just check that that might be wrong on mine oh no that's fine so what happens when we turn the selector away from the all position which means we're turning it to L basically well we want to go to magneto left we want the left magneto to be on and then the finally is what happens when we turn the selector into the R position right magneto what happens when we go into that we obviously want the right magneto to be on so a number of actions to set up you can of course pause this video and set it up exactly how I've set it up um, what next the I don't think I've got cowl set up no the lights um, these are very very similar to set all of these up they are very similar so when the master battery is switched on we need to send a simulation event toggle master battery and again it's just a straightforward toggle switch so when it's switched off we also need to toggle master battery with the um, alternator it again it's a toggle switch switch on switch off so you go to add event you've got two options either on or off so for both of those it sends simulation event toggle master alternator it's a toggle switch avionics master again a toggle switch toggle avionics master fuel pump guess what it's a toggle switch <laughs> toggle elect fuel pump uh, de-icing now this one's it is a toggle but it's actually got a separate setting switched on anti-ice on switch off anti-ice off there's a surprise um, pitot heat on and off panel light on and off beacon uh, this is a straightforward toggle switch so they're both the same action on and off toggle beacon lights um, nav lights again a straightforward toggle strobe on and off taxi another toggle and landing on and off so let me just quickly go through these one more time so that you know how to do it so if you to add an event let's say switched on add action send simulation event FSUI PC filter for me personally and we want to toggle let's see if I can find this toggle nav lights is it there we go uh, 
Oh no, we're on the landing lights, aren't we? Landing lights. So it's landing lights on or off. There we go. Landing lights on. That would be one to do for get switched on. And then similarly for the off position, landing lights off. Okay. I hope that's explained it all there. Um, gear, <laughs> very straightforward. Again, because this is a Cessna 172, it doesn't have a retractable gear, so I haven't actually set that up. If you wanted to, though, in fact, let's do it very quickly. Add event, gear up, add action, send simulation event, FSUI PC. We need to find gear up, which is there. Okay, that's added an action for gear up, and then add an action for gear down, add event, gear down, add action. Send simulation event, FSUI PC, up to gear down, which is there, gear down, click OK, OK, OK. That's it, we've set up gear up and gear down. So if this uh, aircraft had retractable gear, then operating this button would do that. So that, my friends, I think is about it. I don't think there's anything else there to, uh, to demonstrate on the panel. If you do have any questions or if something is not quite clear, by all means, um, leave me a comment in the comments box below. I'll try and answer them as best as I can. Um, I'm by no means an expert on this. Um, you know, I, I still really get in my head around it. And especially for the payware aircraft, I'm still getting my head around it. In fact, I'm still struggling to set up the Flight One ATR and I haven't even tried things like the iFly or the PMDG. I may do another video on those later on um, with Sim Connect. Um, it may just be that I, I, you know, I'm having problems in Sim Connect. In fact, let me just put what I'm going to do very quickly. I'll pause the video. I'll load up my ATR, and I'll show you what happens in the ATR. Back in a second. Okay, hi guys, welcome back. Um, I'm now in the Flight One um, ATR 72500. So this is a payware aircraft. And I want to show you what happens because I've yet to actually get this configured correctly with SPAD. So let me bring down SPAD. Um, so I've got it uh, configured. I have a new profile for the Flight 180R. Um, so what I've got, these are basically the same settings that we had in the Cessna. So the display value, we want it to display the altitude value. Clockwise turn, we wanted to increase the AP altitude variable, and counterclockwise, we wanted to decrease the altitude variable. However, what happens is, is in fact, let me just change view so that we're uh, there. We go. So this is our autopilot. Watch what happens when I turn the altitude um, tuner. So can you see? It's kind of flicking up, change it to like 300, 500, but it always goes back to 100. That's because it's set to 100 here. If I change the altitude from within the sim, watch what happens on the display on the actual panel. Watch what happens. If I go increase altitude, oh look, it all works. So the simulator is saying 600 feet, so is the panel. But for whatever reason, when I change it in the panel, it always it doesn't change what happens here so I'm gonna do a very quick experiment because this as I say I've yet to actually set up correctly and it should work but it's not so I'm gonna start using sim PC sorry sim connect sim connect instead of FSUI PC so let's see what happens so let's delete all these events we'll delete that one delete that one and delete that one so let's add an event we want to show the display first of all, so we've got a sim connect and we want autopilot um, alt, uh, altitude lock variable, I think that was the one we said it was going to be last time with sim connect, so I'm going to select that one autopilot altitude lock variable All right. show that one there um, then I'm going to add another event for what happens when we turn it clockwise so we need to add an action send simulation event sim connect and we want the autopilot uh, altitude variable ink that one 
autopilot altitude variable link. Okay, that's what happens when we turn it clockwise. What happens when we turn it counterclockwise? Well, we want it to decrease. So add action, simulation event, and sim connect AP alt var deck, that one. Let's see if this actually works now with sim connect. So this really is exactly the same as it was for FSU IPC. We're just now using sim connect instead. Let's see if it works with this. Move that out of the way. And let's try changing the value with this. No, that hasn't worked either. Okay, I, I thought it might work with Sim Connect, but it doesn't. It does exactly the same as FSU IPC. So I have a feeling that what we'll have to do, and I may, I'm going to do another video on this, I think. If you find that you can't get it to work with the aircraft, you'll probably need to um, add an action such as maybe use a keyboard command or a virtual joystick command I don't know I'm gonna to have to look at that when I do get it working I'll do another quick video on it and let you guys know in case we have to do it that way other than that I think I'm gonna call it uh, call it a wrap for this video I hope it's uh, been useful for you and demonstrated it uh, as I said before if you have any questions or comments please leave them in the box below until next time take care guys I'll see you later bye bye thank you for watching